it's your girl, the Jackie Jackson, and we are here once again this week with our Tax Deed Tuesdays, Tax Deed Tuesdays. I am so excited to have you all with me. Oh my goodness, it's like we just grow from week to week, every week on Tax Deed Tuesdays. Keep your comments coming, please. Keep the shares coming and the likes coming. I love all of it. I'm always responding to you guys. So I appreciate each and every one of you. So this week's Tax D Tuesday, we're going to kind of go a little bit backwards. We're going to step a little bit backwards. So I want to talk about tax liens for a second. Tax liens, okay? So, so far we've been discussing tax deeds. Today, we're going to be talking about tax liens, which eventually, you know, meanders and finds a way to become like a tax deed. <laughs> There's a process for that, right? So for those of us um, investors that love to gain a rate of return on their money, they invest in tax liens. Tax liens is where you actually receive a percentage or interest rate when you actually pay the delinquent tax year for another property owner, okay? So it's really, really cool. Most counties across the United States, they have tax lien auctions at least once a year. Some may have them twice a year, but tax liens auctions are normally once a year. Why? Because someone, a property owner, has to actually be delinquent for a full tax year, a full taxable period, before that lien is sold at the tax lien auction. Anywho, most tax liens have a redemption period, right? They got to give the property owner some time to pay and reimburse the investor that paid their taxes for them. So that's called the redemption period. And that can vary. That can vary from state to state. Um, here in Florida, it is two years. So you have like tax lien redemption periods as short as like six months and as long as three years, like depending on that state. So you want to make sure that you pay attention and you know exactly how long the redemption period actually is. So in the state of Florida, the redemption period is two years. So two years. Anyway, so what happens after the two years? So if Mr. Smith does not pay back his tax lien certificate after that two years and the certificate now matures, then that tax lien certificate holder now has an opportunity to go back to the taxing authority. So whether it's called the tax collector, which is here in Florida, some other states call it the tax assessor, other states call it the revenue commissions department. You're going to go back to that department who issued you the tax lien itself and you're going to say hey you know mr smith did not pay me what's the next step so every county has a process of how you begin the enforcement of your of your lien okay how you actually collect <laughs> this is this is an attempt to collect the debt all right so how do you collect if someone doesn't pay your lien this is important so in florida the way how this works, um, in Florida statute 197.502, if I'm not mistaken. So 197.502, that's the place in the statute where they start talking about like what's next, right? So every state has a law that talks about what's next. Like what do you do? What are your, what are your powers? What are your responsibilities as a tax lien certificate holder? So what I've done for us today is kind of like fast forward that process. So in the state of Florida, the tax lien certificate holder who has a certificate that is um, matured, they can apply for something called a tax deed, all right? They can apply for the actual tax deed. And then instead of them being a tax lien certificate holder now, now they're going to actually be a tax deed applicant. So they kind of like transition, right? Because now they're getting ready to like enforce their force their lien because the property owner did not pay or reimburse them during the redemption period. So now they're going to apply for a tax deed. All right. But there's a caveat. But wait, there's more. All right. <laughs> but wait, there's more. So here's what we're going to talk about the more. So I'm about to share my screen right now so you guys can actually see 
what an actual um, tax deed application looks like. And I'm gonna go over it with you line by line. Perfect. So now you are currently looking at a tax deed application, right? So this is a real live tax deed application, you guys, for a property that's actually going up for auction. So this is real live information. So as you can see, application for tax deed, uh, Florida statute 197.502. How cool is that? So when we go to page number two, we actually get to see exactly what the tax deed application looks like. So this is what actually starts the process for the, the tax deed. So I kind of gave you guys like a, a quick summary regarding the lien. But now if you're still with me, where we are in the process is that that tax lien certificate holder has a certificate that has been unredeemed and they are exercising their right to enforce their liens. So remember I told you, but wait, there's more. <laughs> So the cool thing about public records is that a lot of things are going to be available for you to view, right? So including this tax deed application is available in public records to be viewed. So let's look at it together real quick. So the person or entity that owns this certificate is this person's name right here, Micon Financial Services Incorporated and Ocean Bank. And yes, it is the real Ocean Bank, okay? Banks are the largest consumers and purchasers of tax lien certificates. Why? Because they get great, great interest rates. And this is a way for them to make extra income for their uh, stockholders and shareholders. So they invest in tax lien certificates all the time. When you're looking at the tax deed applications, especially here in Florida, you'll come across names like Ocean Bank, you'll come across names like HSBC, which is another financial institution. You'll also come across um, Capital One, all of those financials, they invest in tax lien certificates. So if the big banks are over there investing in tax lien certificates, uh, you might want to pay attention and start investing over there as well if you're looking for higher interest rates. Anyway, I digress. So what you're looking at here, this is the actual applicant, the applicant, the tax deed applicant, right? Ocean Bank or Micon Financial Services, care of Juan C. Cap. Pote, maybe. I don't know. Hopefully I didn't butcher his name. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so the tax deed applicant hereby, let me see if I can probably get it a little closer here, right? Hereby holds the listed tax certificate um, and hereby surrenders the same to the tax collector and makes an application for tax deed. How cool is that? So this is the application, well, not the application, but this is the account number of the property. This is the certificate number, and this is the date the certificate was issued. So it was for tax year 2017. And then this is the legal description of that property. So remember I told you that there's like a lot more to this process, and I wanted to just make sure you were clear on it. So guess what? When you submit a tax deed application, if you are a tax lien certificate holder and you're eligible to do so, you're also going to be agreeing to the following. You're going to be agreeing to paying the current taxes if it's due and redeeming all outstanding tax certificates plus the interest that are not in your possession. So what does that mean? That means all other tax lien certificates that has been outstanding and accruing interest that may be owned by other people, you're also going to have to foot the bill temporarily and redeem those certificates as well, just to make sure that you are like the last person standing. You're the only one that has an outstanding lien, so you're the only primary person that's left, right? What you're also going to have to do is pay all delinquent and omitted taxes plus the interest covering the property, okay? In addition, you're also going to have to pay all the tax collector's fees, the ownership and encumbrance report, the clerk of the court costs, the cost to actually send out all of the process and the notification, all of the charges and the fees and the sheriff costs. Basically, you are going to be footing the bill up front and then waiting to be reimbursed by the auction, right? What you're also going to have to submit and attach to your application is all of your tax sale certificates, right? Um, that are relevant to this application, right? That are based off of the legal description or, you know, that's for this actual um, property. 
right, that are in your possession. So sometimes um, someone may own two taxing certificates on the same property. So what does that mean? That's, that's referencing right here that if you have multiple certificates on the same property and you are the tax deed applicant, then you will need to surrender all of those certificates at the time of the application. So this is what people always ask me. <laughs> Jackie, why do I have to pay all these fees? Like, why do I have to actually, you know, what's the point of the tax deed applicant, aka tax lien certificate holder in the past that's trying to enforce his lien? Why do I, why do they have to actually pay all of those fees? Well, guess what? They're the ones that's going to actually be reimbursed. There's only two ways that they're going to be reimbursed. Number one, the property owner finally, you know, gets their finances together and they now reimburse the tax deed applicant in its entirety. And the property is going to be redeemed and it does not make it to the auction, right? So up until this time, the property owner can still even redeem, but now they got to redeem now with like more penalties, more interest and more fees. So it got a little bit more expensive than what it was before, unfortunately. And, or, the property is actually going to go to auction and you or me, you know, other investors are going to bid. And then the sum total of whatever we bid is going to address and take care of the opening bid. So the opening bid is also a sum of all of the delinquent certificates. It's all the sum of um, all of the um, outstanding taxes, the penalties, the interest that had been accruing on all of those certificates and um, all of the fees. So that's certificates, any outstanding taxes, uh, what else? The fees, the penalties, and the interest that has accrued. Yep, so those five things are what's included in the opening bid. So when an investor bids um, on that property at the auction, at the tax deed auction, the tax deed applicant becomes um, reimbursed, right? They get paid off, even though they put the bill in the, in the beginning. <laughs> So I just wanted to kind of just break that process down for you guys. Um, it's not complicated by any means. Um, in some states, instead of the clerk of court like collecting all of that money up front, um, they want the tax lien certificate to holder to be the one that actually does the most of the work, right? So instead of um, them collecting the money and then um, processing the file for you so it can go to a tax deed auction, what they'll do is they'll say, hey, you have to send out the notifications. You are the one that has to do all the process yourself and then provide us with the evidence of that process. We will review your documents once you are complete. And then if you did it successfully, then we're just going to grant you the, the tax deed. You know, it just depends on the state. So it's a pretty cool process. It's nice and easy. You know, you're really just dealing directly um, with the government. And um, there's so many investors that's like successful at it. You just really got to know what the procedures and the process is, right? So again, this is the Jackie Jackson. I'm really excited to share with you guys. And this was our Tax Day Tuesday. We're talking about the process of how does a tax lien get all the way to like a tax deed? Like, what does that look like? But nobody really talks about like the technicalities behind it. So I was just glad to share it with you guys. All right. I will see y'all next week. See y'all next week. <laughs> Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>